Well, welcome to Coffee Break Academy Virtual Meeting Etiquette Edition. Um, in today's world, you know, a few months back, March hit, and before that, no one had any clue what Zoom was. Well, I should say a few people did know, but for most of us, um, we didn't know what it was beforehand, and this is a whole new way of adapting to um, life and to meetings, since most meetings nowadays are conducted via Zoom or another platform. Um, I know some people have switched to other platforms like WebEx or um, Google Meetings or whatnot, but all the etiquette tips that we're going to talk about apply to all of them. Um, you just might not have the same settings in those programs that we'll be talking about. We will give, be giving some tips specific to Zoom, um, since I think that is what people are using the most nowadays. You know, it's it's a different way. Like I'm saying, it's a different way of living nowadays. We've all learned um, in-person meeting etiquette from when we first started in the workforce. And now that we're switching over to virtual meeting etiquette, it's a whole new field to uh, navigate. So we decided to um, give a little lesson on it. So, all right. Uh, these are pretty basic. Before the meeting, uh, you're going to need to download the software or app beforehand. If you're on a mobile device, you'll need to download the Zoom app. On your computer, you'll need to download a little bit of software from Zoom from their website. And create an account for quick sign-in. That way it saves your full name so that it shows up during the meeting. And also... Um, your photo. So I uh, highly recommend using a professional headshot. If you don't have a professional headshot, I can help you with that with my business, Edgewater Creative. <laughs> now to cover some Zoom tips. So you, there is an option called green screen where you can change the background. Um, you can choose one of your photos that you particularly like. If say you were on vacation somewhere and you're like, wow, I have a picture of the fields of Ireland that I would like to display. You can upload those, or you can download one from the internet. Uh, there are a couple stock photo sites that have free photos you can use called Pex, that one's called pexels.com and one's called unsplash.com. I have a little example of pexels if you just type in Zoom backgrounds. These are some of them that come up. There are literally hundreds of free background photos that you can choose from and you would just download the photo and upload them into um, Zoom. And then you can even make your own customizable one on canva.com or choose one of their pre-made templates. So I'm just gonna show you guys. So I downloaded a couple um, just to show you guys so you can literally put anything you want. Maybe some of you recognize this from Parks and Rec. Any Parks and Rec fans out there? So you don't Tiger need King. like a solid background? You don't need a solid background. Um, you can use anything you want. There are co oh. caveats to that, which we'll yes. uh, go over in just a moment. Um, but these are just some examples. I've made one on canva.com that has my business logo and our podcast logo also. Um, so you can even do that. And then this is just an example of a fun one that I found on Canva also. If it's someone's birthday, you can Animated. do that. So um, now if you are using a green screen background, you're going to want to make sure that it's one that's not going to drown you out or be too distracting. <laughs> so um, in meetings, uh, both T and I have seen this where someone has, um, there's a pre, uh, you know, built in uh, background of the San Francisco Bay. And somewhat when you have that one on, sometimes it looks like you're drowning in the San Francisco Bay. So <laughs> always test it, it out before the meeting and make sure that it's gonna fit and not be distracting where it just looks like a face coming out of a body of water of some sort. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to show it on mine because mine doesn't actually work with green screen. No matter what I do, it'll look like I'm drowning. So I don't use a background. Like I just, I made my own background because I'm an event planner. So like I just have a Dollar Tree background that it looks like I'm on the beach, but that's just, just my creative way of going around it so. so yeah that's always an option too is just build your the classiest. 
fun. Uh, there's also a feature on Zoom that is my personal secret. It's a beauty filter called Touch Up My Appearance. So you can go into your video settings and click on that box so that it kind of smooths out your skin. And if you don't, if you're a lady and you don't feel like wearing makeup that day, it gives the appearance of a nice fresh face. <laughs> so that's my, my personal secret that I'm sharing. So uh, another tip is turn on the gallery view to see everyone at once. Um, there's a couple different options. You have speaker view and there's gallery view. Speaker view is going to focus on who's actually talking at the moment. Gallery view is going to display everyone that's present in the meeting. Now, if you're on a phone, you may not have that option to see who else is on. So to see who else is on the call, you're just going to swipe to the left and then it'll display. But because, you know, you're working with a smaller screen on the phone, you can only see one person at a time usually. Another tip is to hide any non-video participants. So there are some people that either can't have, um, that don't want to put their video on or are calling into the meeting. So you can always hide them so you're not just seeing the blank thing to take up space. For our reactions on um, Zoom, so you can either applaud or thumbs up while staying muted. Oh, reactions. So you would just click at the bottom of your screen. There's a button that says reactions and you would just click on that. There you go. All right, now we're getting into the nitty gritty. We're talking about etiquette. All right, so number one, be careful where you sit. Make sure there's enough light, but not too much light where you're gonna be drowned out. So for example, uh, you know, I'm in front of a window right now, but at a certain time of day when the sun starts to set, that sun starts drowning me out where, you know, it's again, like I'm drowning in the San Francisco Bay. So you want to make sure that there's enough light so that, you know, if you're in a dark room, be, you might want to turn that light on. If you're, you have too much light, you might want to turn those, um, put those blinds down. Be aware of your surroundings, um, like messes in the background. This is why Tia has a nice uh, backdrop up. <laughs> yep. To cover the mess, mess behind it of the living room that I have. So I have a divider that I've put the thing on top of. So, <laughs> uh, Again, don't use a green screen if it doesn't work. You're going to want to make sure you center yourself in the frame. Um, I always I've like noticed. to center this sign into our frame so that I can constantly be promoting um, our podcast on all calls. Yeah. So <laughs> there you go. Exactly. So I've noticed with a lot of people that are on their phones and I've been guilty of this myself, um, you know, you hold it down here or, you know, it's like, but you're going to want to make sure that you're nice and centered because otherwise the people on the other end that you're talking to are going to see just, you know, a clip of your forehead or maybe your chin and it's just awkward for everyone. So <laughs> make sure you're nice and centered in there. Very easily distracted, which is leading into this next one. So I have everyone kind of like off to the side turned off. I don't have it on gallery view because I get distracted personally. And I think a lot of people get distracted during um, online meetings because there are so many distractions around. So another recommendation I have is don't move around a lot or have a lot of action going on in the background because it is distracting. You know, if we're in a meeting with uh, 20 other people, my eye is going to catch the one person that's walking with their phone to the parking garage or, and you know, it's sometimes you can't help it. Like I said, sometimes it's unavoidable, but in that case, you might want to take your video off and just put that professional headshot option up. Uh, this one is uh, put an effort into your appearance, even though it's easy not to nowadays. Tia has it, a personal yeah. recommendation. Yes, this was my personal recommendation. Just try it without wearing pants at least once um, because it's just a freeing thing that it's like your little secret. Don't tell anyone about it and don't stand up 
but it's just one of those funny things that you would never, no one would ever know about. If then. you're not that adventurous to wear no pants at all, you can do uh, what I sometimes do for very early meetings, which is wear your pajama pants on the bottom, throw on a nice top. <laughs> Seated, stay present. Also with that one, so watch me even when you're not seeing my phone. And like, I've seen this so many times, people will be giving a presentation and like half of the people are like this. We know you're on your phone. Like we can tell you're playing on your phone. Like you're looking down. So like it is kind of um, inconsiderate for like the person that's actually talking to be like on your phone the entire time like somebody spent their time doing a presentation for you and you're just like uh-huh yep yep so kind of think of it as a typical meeting like if you are in a meeting in an actual work setting are you going to be on your phone sitting there going or like pretending like while someone's talking like you wouldn't do it so kind of transfer that over into the virtual world too so. exactly and that's actually my next point there it so, is <laughs> If there's a speaker, try to look interested. Not to eat during the meeting because would you normally be eating if it were an in-person meeting? Like, you know, maybe if it was a networking meeting, sure. But if it's, you know, you're meeting with your bosses over going over the day's agenda, would you be, you know, down on, down on burger? Probably not. <laughs> so if you do have to eat during it, take your video off while you eat. Um, it's just kind of the polite thing to do. Now, this one is one that I know everyone has been guilty of at some point in any kind of meeting, and that is don't take up the whole meeting talking about yourself. The general rule of thumb is a 30-second elevator pitch. So you might want to hone that 30-second elevator pitch before the meeting just so that you have it down to a limited amount of time. <clears throat> audio is very important. Make sure that you're not covering your mic if you're on a phone or an iPad. So the easiest thing I would say is to get a holder, okay? Or you might want to use some kind of little prop for it. Um, Tia recommends investing in a microphone if you can. I mean, that's yeah. the that's the podcast in us recommending yeah. that. But it's only 30, I mean, and it give you better audio quality. Obviously, like we use it because of podcasting and other audio um, things, but like my mic was only 30 bucks. You can get them on Amazon and virtual meetings aren't going anywhere, uh, any going away anytime soon. So this is uh, our most important rule that Tia was saying should have been number one, and that is mute your mic upon entering a meeting and when not speaking. Now, another tendency that people have during Zoom meetings because we're not in person, so we can't read body language as easily and social cues, but everyone tends to talk to each other at once. It's kind of that weird line where you don't know when to start talking, when to stop talking, when someone's going to say something, when someone's not. So don't interrupt. Try not to interrupt others, I should say. Um, if you absolutely need to say something or have a question during a presentation, there's that chat box that you can put whatever you want in just so, um, and that person will eventually see it. They may not see it right away or until after the presentation, but that is the polite thing to do. Um, we've gone over this a little already. Hold the phone still, preferably use a prop to hold it up while you're speaking or while you're in a meeting. Um, if you're in the car, you can get a holder for your phone, which is actually a good um, recommendation, even if you're not on a Zoom meeting. That's just an all the time good feature to have. Um, I have one that uh, kind of clips onto my uh, air conditioner vent and by magnet holds it up there. So that's a good option. They're super cheap if you look online. Um, also, try not to use Zoom on your phone unless you absolutely have to. The computer's always best. Um, again, when you're on your phone, you have the issues of covering your mic, of you know holding it up so that people are only seeing your forehead, um, of you know the uh, not seeing everyone at once. So the computer's always going to be your best option. So um, just a couple tips for hosting a meeting: be organized. That is very important. Prepare an agenda ahead of time and have time limits for each topic that you're talking about. 
So if you're doing a networking event, again, you're going to want to only have people do a 30 second elevator pitch, and then you're going to want to allot only a certain amount of time for each thing that you're um, going to be talking about. One hour is usually enough time. Um, yes. Log in early. So that's another big one. You don't want people waiting uh, for long. Um, if you'd like to collect data like people's names and email addresses for follow-up afterward, you can set it up as a register and advance meeting. So they would uh, register for it and then get the link to the event as opposed to just putting the link out there. But if you want, um, like for this one, you can put your link in your marketing, add a password for more protection. <clears throat> Make the amount of people manageable, especially if networking. Use breakout rooms to form smaller groups. So Zoom has an awesome feature called breakout rooms, where if you are doing, say, a networking event, um, instead of, you know, I think this meeting that I put up here is 57 participants. Instead of 57 participants trying to all network at once and even doing their 30 second elevator pitch that's going to go over an hour, um, so you can do breakout rooms where you can um, click on that feature and put, you know, three people per breakout room and then they get to network for an amount of time in a more intimate setting and then go back to the main <clears throat> meeting after, say, two minutes or whatever. You set the time limit. Um, there's always the option to record the meeting for marketing or to um, and for social media. So you can always like post it on your YouTube page or your Facebook page like we're going to be doing today. Uh, don't overdo virtual meetings. People are getting tired of the virtual meetings um, after four months of doing them because, you know, everyone started doing them all at once all the time. <laughs> so now people are starting to get a little tired of them. So only do them if necessary. If it can be covered by an email, send an email. And does anyone have any questions? And where would you find breakout room though in Zoom? So if you're a host of a meeting and you may have to go into your advanced features to um, have it show up in your meeting, there are some options in Zoom that don't show up unless you ask it to. So when you go into your Zoom account and into settings, you're going to want to make sure those options are checked off. So one of them is add a poll. One of them is share screen. One of them is breakout rooms. So you're going to want to make sure that those are checked off on the list so that they are options that show up during your Zoom meeting at the bottom of the screen. Does anyone have any other questions on what we covered? No. They're great. OK, perfect. Um, yeah, would you like to, I've, I've talked this entire time, would you like to? I sure would. Thank you so much for offering. <laughs> We're the politest podcasters around, if you didn't know. Um, so yes, so we have started something with our podcast. Our podcast is called Meet Us on Main Street. I'm Tia, that's Stacy, as you kind of figured by our names at the bottom corner. Uh, so we have a podcast that we release bi-weekly on Thursdays, which is our regular podcast, but we are also now doing one in conjunction with the Chamber, which is on the first Monday of every month called Chamber Chatter. And our first guest on that show is none other than Pam, our president of the Dunedin Chambers. <laughs> so um, that will be a monthly uh, chamber podcast episode that will be all things Dunedin Chamber related. And we'll interview chamber members. And yeah, so we premiere that one on August 3rd will be that uh, first episode. So if you're interested uh, on being a guest in one of our future episodes, just send us, shoot us an email, meet us on mainstreetpodcast at gmail.com. Awesome. And if you don't want to be a guest, you can always listen. We're and rate, review, on... and subscribe. <laughs> We're available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. We have a Facebook page that we're constantly updating with silly yep. little videos. TikTok. We have a TikTok now have a account TikTok now. And, um, so we're going to start utilizing that. We're doing. So, um, so yeah, you can uh, find us in any of those uh, platforms. Yes. Thanks, guys. All right. Well, thank this you so great. much, everyone. Thank for you. Learned right, a bye. lot. Thank you. Thank bye. You. Have a great day.
Thank you very much. I learned a lot. Right. Appreciate Good. it. Thank you. <laughs>